Hey, welcome everyone into the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Counterpoint. Now I got a quick and easy one for you guys today. This is a problem that we run into as uh, guys who, who work to operate a tech line. We get people calling up not knowing exactly what kind of vehicle they have in front of them. Now this information can be pulled from a lot of different sources. Um, you can get it a lot of different ways, but one of the best ways to get it is by looking at your VIN number and decoding what that actually means. Now you can find your VIN number in your vehicle in a number of places. Um, you can even find it on your insurance card, um, on your registration, your vehicle's registration, on the title. Um, where I like to look is actually right on the vehicle. That way I don't have to go through anybody's glove, glove, uh, glove box or anything like that. You can find the VIN, VIN number typically on the lower left corner of the windshield. Otherwise, if you open up the door, you will typically find the VIN number either on the uh, B pillar of the vehicle, uh, between the door and the B pillar, or on the side of the door itself over here. Um, and you'll find a sticker that's got the VIN number along with a bunch of other information. And on our other vehicle over here, you'll find that it's the same way. Lower left corner of the windshield right here. And just inside of the door here on the lower part of the uh, B pillar in there. So the VIN number is easy to access, easy to get a hold of, um, and it's going to give you a ton of good information. So what's all in there? Well, why don't we take a look? Why don't we work to decode the VINs of the two vehicles we have in here? We're going to be starting with this one, and then we're going to bump to that one at the end. So here's the VIN number. For safety and security reasons, I have X'd out the final six digits of the VIN number. I'll get to that in just a little bit of why that is. So we're going to start with the first number. Now you'll always read the VIN from left to right. Number one is going to be on this vehicle is a four. That first value can be either a number or a letter and it's going to specify the country of origin. Okay? If you see A through H, you're in Africa. J through R, that's an Asian vehicle. Um, the country of origin is Asian. Like this is a as you guys can probably tell a Toyota, this would be an Asian vehicle, but the four denotes that this thing's country of origin was North America, okay? S through Z would be Europe, uh, J through R is Asia, and we're going to be skipping O and Q. I'm going to get into that in just a little bit of why we do that. Uh, six through seven will be uh, New Zealand or Australia, and eight or nine will be South America, okay? In the U.S. here, we will typically, s <laughs> obviously, see vehicle origin will be one through five for most of the vehicles that we are dealing with, okay? Um, and North America will include uh, Mexico-built vehicles as well as Canadian-built vehicles. All right. The second part of the VIN, uh, values numbered two and three, the th second and third values, can also be a number or a letter. And this is going to be the manufacturer code and that's going to designate, or could potentially designate this specific brand that it is. So typically the second digit will be the vehicle manufacturer, whether it is T for Toyota or F for Ford. Now, they're not all this way. Uh, you would want to look up a chart that would have all that information, but usually that second digit will be that. The following digit, third digit, will usually designate something further specific from that. So on this Toyota, one designates that this thing is a passenger vehicle. If you were to see a GM vehicle, that would say G4. That would be a Buick. G8 would be a Saturn. Or if you had a Ford that read FT, that would be a Ford truck for your second and third digits. The fourth through seven digits are manufacturer specific. Now there's no sort of a structure that this needs to be, um, but this will commonly tell us uh, um, specifics about that vehicle. But again, this um, four through seven on this vehicle are going to be different than four through seven on that other vehicle. Um, commonly, we'll see the fourth value referred to as body code. Uh, GM vehicles, for example, you would want to look up body code if you're pulling out a GM vehicle on a scan tool and ask for body code, you're going to be looking at the fourth digit, whether it's an N body, Grand Am, Alero, uh, W body, Grand Prix, something like that, uh, Impala maybe would be a W body. Um, that's where we're going to find that. So on our Toyota here, we're going to find that B, our fourth digit stands for that it's a four-door sedan and it's two-wheel drive. The K is actually going to be our engine code. Uh, in this vehicle, it is a 2GR FE, which is the uh, 3.5 liter V6. Um, and then the three is going to be based on the chassis code. And then six is going to be our restraint system. This is telling me that we have manual belts, um, two airbags, 
side airbags, curtain shield airbags, and a knee airbag for the driver's seat. So in these four digits, we find out that it's a four-door two-wheel drive sedan. It's got a V6 engine, uh, chassis code, as well as the airbag system. Then we get into the eighth digit, which is also manufacturer specific and will vary depending between vehicles. Commonly on domestic vehicles like this one over here, the eighth digit will be the engine code, okay? If you were to call us up for technical assistance, um, you, we might ask you for that engine code or the eighth digit of the VIN. Uh, that's gonna tell us what engine is in there, whether it's a W or an eight or you know something like that. That'll point us typically on a domestic vehicle towards what engine is in there. But actually on our Toyota here, the eighth digit is a B, and that is telling us the model information that we are working with a Avalon here. All right, because the um, K, our sixth digit here, excuse me, fifth digit, said that it was K, that was our engine code on this vehicle, okay? So again, four through eight are not going to be um, mandated in any way. That is gonna be manufacturer specific. We get to the ninth digit. The ninth digit is going to be the VIN check or VIN security code. Now this is a number that is determined through a complex algorithm that I'm not gonna get into today. If you guys wanna learn about that, let me know. I'd be happy to do a video on that algorithm at some point. But basically what it is, is it is a way to verify that the VIN is real and that it is authorized by the manufacturer, okay? This uh, ninth digit helps to weed out fake VIN numbers, okay? Help keep your, if you are a, a car lot, help keep your inventory safe. Um, make sure you don't have fake VIN numbers. You could always, um, you know, if you're buying a vehicle, look at the title, you could perform the algorithm and you could verify if it is a real VIN or a fake VIN, okay? And again, if you guys want to see a video on that, I'd be happy to do a follow-up video at some point um, figuring out that VIN security code algorithm, all right? The 10th digit, 10th digit is always going to give us the model year of the vehicle. As you guys saw on those two stickers, that also included in the upper right corner on those stickers a date code of, of manufacturer. Now, it's interesting with some manufacturers where that date code lies in terms of model year. So let's say that your vehicle was built 10 of 05, 10th month of 05. Is that an 06 vehicle or an 05? Commonly, you would think of that as an 06. Even though it was built in 05, it'd be 06 model year. If you want to be 100% certain, look at the 10th digit of your VIN. If it's a 6, then you know it's an 06. If it's a 5, then you knew it was an 05. Now, back in 1980, these were starting with letters. 80, 1980 was an A, 1981 B, 1982 was C, and so on. And then we skipped some of these letters that look like other letters, and I actually... Uh, put next to them, sounding them out, so that way you guys knew exactly what we're looking at. So we skipped I, O, Q, and U because they could be mistaken for other um, values on there. You know, an O looks like a zero, an I looks like an L, a Q looks a lot like a zero or an O, and a U could look like a V. So um, when the manufacturer started doing this, they skipped these four values. All right, we got to model year 2000. Uh, you all remember Y2K, right? Well, the year 2000 was Y, all right? So we just go um, through the alphabet for each model year. And then 01, uh, it was really easy between 2001 and 2009, and 01 was a one, 04 was a four, 09 was a nine. Really simple, doesn't take much thinking to figure out what model year your, your vehicle is off of the 10th digit of the VIN, but we uh, ran out of numbers. So in 2010, we started going back to the letters again. So 2010 was an A, 11 was a B, 2012 is a C, and now 2018 model year that we're gonna see coming out, they are going to be VIN J for the 10th digit. And again, that's just going down the alphabet well, again, skipping I, O, Q, and U. Okay, keep that in mind while you go through this. Our 11th value can also be a number or a letter, and this is gonna give you the specific plant of manufacture. And again, this is going to be manufacturer specific. Uh, U does not mean the same plant for two different companies. Uh, you can see here for Toyota on this VIN, means that it was Georgetown um, that this Toyota was built. But for Ford, a U means that it was built in Louisville. If you have a C on a Ford, that means it was the Ontario truck plant. If you have six on a GM, that means it was the Cami auto plant in Ingersoll, Ontario. So. The um, letters could be the same for different manufacturers. That doesn't mean they're built 
like this Toyota and this Ford here are not built at the same factory. They are manufacturer specific, okay? 12th through 17th, these letters that I have X'd out here, or numbers that I've X'd out, these are going to be numerical. These are vehicle specific. This is your vehicle's um, serial number. Um, think of it as a social security number for your vehicle. Every vehicle is going to have a different last six if they're all the same options, okay? So what does that mean? It means that every Georgetown built 06 Avalon with the specific airbag package and the 2GR FE engine, every one of those vehicles that's exactly the same will have a different last six. Now let's say they were building Avalons at two different plants. Let's say they were building them at Georgetown and let's say they were building Avalons in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin where I am. Those two vehicles could have the same matching last six. The only difference would be the plant code, plant and manufacturer code, uh, VIN 11, would be the difference, as long as there's something different. So you could have two of the exact same vehicles, 2006 and 2007, the 10th digits would be different. They could have the exact same last six of the VIN number. Basically, those first, all, all 17 digits cannot be the same as another 17 digits out there, okay? There are no two matching VIN numbers. Just like social security numbers, there's no two matching numbers out there. That is how we identify our vehicles. That is how we register and title our vehicles. They all have to vary in some way or uh, some form or another, okay? So let's just run down this VIN number on this silver car that's sitting behind me. This is the VIN number. For those of you that are familiar with Fords, you can already see the Ford sequence in here. But uh, let's start with the first one. Number one, country of origin, that is going to be in the U.S. Uh, two and three is going to tell us that is a Ford passenger car. The H is going to tell us what, uh, fourth digit H is going to tell us what airbags are in this car. And P2F is going to tell us that this is a front wheel drive Taurus Limited. Nine is going to be our engine code on a Ford. That is going to tell us that we have a two liter gasoline turbocharged direct injected GTDI inline four cylinder. So it's got the EcoBoost two liter in this Taurus. Uh, the six is going to be our VIN security code. D is going to tell us our model year, 10th of the VIN. This is a 2013. G is going to tell us that this vehicle is manufactured in Chicago, Illinois. So by looking at all this information, we know that this vehicle was originated in the U.S. or for the U.S. It was built in Chicago. It is a 2013 Taurus 2-liter EcoBoost front-wheel drive limited with that airbag setup. Now that's a ton of information just out of a couple digits that are really easy to get access to in multiple places. I mean, if you have your insurance app on your phone, you have your VIN number in your hand. You go to the parts store, you call up the tech line, anything where they're asking you, well, what engine is in your car? Or uh, what year is your car? And you don't know for sure, look at your VIN number. You can find that information. And if, you, um, if, you're, if you're working on like a Toyota or something like this, and you don't know exactly which digit is the engine code, type it in, Toyota engine code decoder or something like that. Do a Google search you'll find the information very, very quickly to tell you exactly what you have. Now, these 17 digits aren't a tell-all. We don't know color. We don't know things like rim size. Does it have the sync system in it? Does it have radar adaptive cruise or blind spot or lane keep assist or lane departure warning? We don't know all of the options that this vehicle has. Is it black leather or is it uh, parchment leather? You know, we don't know exactly every option that that vehicle has but we at least know where it was built, when it was built, um, where it was intended to go, uh, the engine, the year, we know a ton of information, okay? And that's enough information for you that you should be able to buy parts for the vehicle or contact us on our tech line for technical assistance on that vehicle, all right? So have your VIN number handy if you're calling us up, have your VIN number handy if you're buying parts. You'll save a ton of time. You know, just walking back out to the parking lot to grab that VIN number would be a hassle or pop the hood and figure out what engine is in here. The VIN number will tell us it. Use it. Use it to your advantage because it saves time. And that's what it's all about, especially if you're in a shop working flat rate. You need as much information as quickly as possible. The 17-digit VIN number on your vehicle will definitely provide a ton of information about what that vehicle specifically is. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this uh, information useful. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, follow everything out on YouTube, thumbs up, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, check us out, out on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. The links for all of those will be down below the video here. Uh, make sure to join us for our next live class. 
And uh, I think that's going to be it. So thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you guys again next time. Happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.